tough hunt, and I graduated from Beacon Hill Grade School in 48 with all the rest of you. I went to Cleveland and got married and had two kids. Uh, I'm the grandmother of five grandkids, and uh, they live in Seattle, some of them in Seattle, some in Denver. Um, I'm an accountant, and my husband's retired Air Force, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. I'm Leanna MacArthur, class of eight, of, uh, you said 84, so I was going to say that, class of 46. And my brothers went to school after me, so maybe some of them were in this eighth grade class, Jim and John MacArthur. Um, I have four children now and seven lovely, wonderful grandchildren, and I'm retired, and it's really nice to be here at my old grade school. I'm Scott Kuhn, and uh, this was my first school, and I went here till the eighth grade. And uh, it, as I remember, it had many happy memories. I have raised four children, and uh, I now live on Mercer Island, and uh, I uh, am welcoming, although this is not my class reunion, a chance to see some old friends. Thank you. Virginia Volstick, now Virginia Armbrust. I live in, still live in the South End, still work. I have two children, a son who works at a TV station in Anchorage, and my daughter who still lives in Seattle. And waiting to retire. <laughs> huh? It's, it's wonderful to be here. <laughs> Last well, summers, I was McCafferty, and I've been married for a long time now, in fact, over 40 years. We have five boys, uh, one's a professor, one paints cars, one's a social welfare worker. Uh, what's the other ones? Anyhow, we have five of them. We have one grandson, and... Uh, Charlie's retired now, my husband, and so we just take life easy and do what we want to do. My name is Elaine Adams Elbert. Uh, I lived out here on Beacon Hill from 41 to 1950. I spent second grade to eighth grade here at Beacon Hill High. And in 61, I moved with my husband and family to Fairbanks, Alaska. And we've been there for 33 years. And uh, raised five children. I have 13 grandchildren. And uh, we love Alaska. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be here. I love reunions. This is wonderful to see all the people that we spent so many good years with. Okay. Thomas, and uh, I'm here with the class of 1948 uh, to take a look at the Beacon Hill Grade School, and my wife is uh, Joyce Thomas, and we're just having us a great and grand time today. Everybody is wired, to say the least. I hope it uh, all goes well. Uh, what am I doing now? I'm uh, working a Boeing aircraft where I've been for 27 years, and uh, I've got three kids, and uh, just in general, everything is fine with me. I couldn't be happier. Hi, I'm Ray Murray. Uh, better known as uh, Pinky in, in the uh, 1948 era. Um, I left the area and went to Whitman College after graduating from Cleveland High and got my bachelor's degree in chemistry. I uh, did research chemistry for three years, spent two years in the Army being conscripted, fortunately m just missed Korea. After I got home from my stint in the service, I spent 25 years in running my own business in downtown San Francisco. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been in property management. I've got a wife of many, many years. Um, same wife, uh, I should add. Uh, two uh, daughters and um, two grandchildren. Happy to be here.
When uh, um, I was part of this Motley crew, uh, I went on to Cleveland High School and then uh, Western Washington, did a little time at the University of Washington, finished a uh, bachelor's, uh, two of them as a matter of fact, at uh, Western and then went on to a master's at the UW. Been a teacher um, 30 years and uh, I'm a librarian at Latona School. Um, I don't know, there's some minor things, went through a depression, went to Korea after the war, uh, was fighting uh, over, I've been married 30 years, have three kids, uh, all of them uh, bigger than me now, and one of them's a pilot at, uh, used to be Lake Union Air, and uh, the other two are just sort of kicking around deciding what they're going to do when they, they uh, get, you know, when they grow up. And uh, my wife is, uh, we've been married over 30, and uh, my wife is sort of her own person. So that, in a nutshell, is Dean Hudson. You know, this is really a, a great day for me and for these other classmates of mine. Um, it all started with the death of my classmate, Warren Bull. Uh, we saw him, I saw his obituary in the Times or the PI paper. I called. Jay Thomas and said Jay and, I, and I've been meaning to call Jay for ages I kept procrastinating uh, but anyway I called Jay and I said let's go to the funeral and Jay says yeah let's go and maybe we might meet some other classmates and but lo and behold we did see uh, our other classmates and we got together and say well we need to all get together and this is the result of um, on the death of a classmate, it created a wonderful day in all in all our lives. Uh, again, we have I have seen some of these classmates for 46 years, and that's a long time. But anyway, this can, this will be a, a happy day and a very memorable day in my life, and I I believe in the rest of my classmates too. Thank you. My name is James Chen. Graduating 46, this first time seen. Our 30 classmates, except for uh, two that I saw at the University of Washington. I'm a widower. I have two kids, a girl and boy, both married. No grandkids, but I'm sure they'll come along. Thanks. Roberto. I uh, left here in 48, went to Franklin. I left Franklin early, joined the Navy. And uh, got out of the Navy in 54. Before I got out of the Navy, I got married and uh, four kids, eight grandkids. Worked for uh, mainly for Safeway stores, uh, truck driver, driver supervisor. And then in uh, four and a half years ago, I retired. And now we uh, don't do too much, my wife and I. <laughs> Just what we want to do. Usually end up in Reno or uh, Las Vegas about once a month or once every two months. Right now we're living in downtown Kirkland on top of the water and we're looking to move to uh, Odessa, Washington to get out of this traffic. And uh, we'll be moved this year whether we find a place or have to rent one. Oh there, Earl Kroll here. Came to Beacon Hill grade school in uh, the third grade, left in the seventh grade. I went to the South End, attended Foster High School. I didn't graduate. And there I went into the service, over to Korea, back, got married. I uh, was married in 1957. I have four kids, three boys, and one girl. As you can tell, I'm a little nervous standing in front of a camera. <laughs> uh, let's see, I worked uh, at the post office for three years, United Parcel Service for 17. I bought Pacific Delivery Service in 1977 and am presently running 15 trucks a day. That's about all I can think of right now. Have a nice day. Hi, I'm Al Schreib, and I've, I'm graduated in 48 with the rest of these people down around here. And over the years, I've uh, retired from the Postal Service, and now I'm completely retired. 
And uh, but I've married and I got uh, seven kids and eighteen grandkids, which is a bunch. But over the years have been good for me and everybody else. That's about all I can tell about myself. <laughs> Billy Jean Schumacher Keeson. And everybody around here knows me as Billy Jean, but I hardly ever use that anymore. I married, uh, went to college, and never finished my teaching degree because I was putting my husband through. We had six children, three boys and three girls, and my husband was in teaching. Um, he was vice president of a college for several years, and then we came up and he was the vice president of King's Garden, or which became known as Christian Ministries. Um, I was working there myself when he passed away from leukemia very suddenly, and uh, the new uh, administration decided I was excess baggage very shortly. So I have worked teaching in a modeling agency for four or five years and worked at Frederick and Nelson. Things kept going bankrupt. I couldn't understand it every time I went to work there. Um, the uh, latest job I have is with GTE, and I sell uh, in Totem Lake. Um, I'm going for my securities license this month, so I've got my insurance license, and I'm trying to pursue something else that will be just a little more interesting than all the electronics I handle all day long. Um, my children are all grown now. The youngest is in college. Four of the six are married, and I have 12 grandchildren. Graduated here in 1948 and went on to Cleveland High School, graduating in 52. Uh, worked for a year and married my high school sweetheart, Don Mills. And we have four children, uh, five grandchildren. Everybody lives here in the Seattle area. Uh, my husband's in the insurance business and uh, I have worked throughout the years after I got everybody in school and uh, everybody I've stayed in the south end we're native Washingtonians and uh, that's about it thanks very much <laughs> hi I'm here on the farm and I graduated in 48 with the rest of you uh, Got married and had my two daughters here in Seattle and then moved to California for, oh, about 30 years. And about three years ago, then I moved to Florida, maybe temporary, maybe back to California, maybe back to Seattle, I don't know. I have uh, three grandchildren now in San Diego area and two in Florida. So I'm living in a high-rise apartment on the 12th floor overlooking the Kennedy Space Center. And it's kind of comfy and nice there right now, so we'll see. I am really glad to be here. I'm so thrilled that we had this and all the work they went to. I wouldn't have missed it. It would have taken a whole lot to make me miss this. <laughs> okay. I'm used to be Marion McVeigh, 
and uh, they're back here at the school, and this is wonderful. It's really neat to have uh, all these people get together at this time. Uh, I can remember a lot of the little incidents that <laughs> went on at this school, like when Miss Drake used to always brush her teeth at lunch, and, <laughs> and Mr. Nostrand was, uh, was told that some boys were chasing the girls with a snake, and so he come out the front stairs to look, and just prior to that, the boys tried to chase me with it, and I said, I'm not scared of any snake. They threw it down, I picked it up to him, I wasn't scared of it, and here comes Mr. Nostrand. I couldn't believe it was you, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, here we are today with uh, Carl Bush, our Mr. Bush, our school teacher, and and it's a sunny day. And um, oh, I guess I was supposed to tell something about me. I've I've got four children and uh, thirteen grandchildren, <laughs> and. I live in Bothell at this time, but I have lived in uh, Anchorage, Alaska, and um, Kailua, Hawaii, and even in New Orleans for almost a year. So I've been around a little bit, but I guess that's about all you want to know about me. We're going, so. Well, Mary and McVeigh and uh, Clayton Aang first contacted me, and uh, talked me into coming down and first few weeks ago I the uh, folks from here had a nice display down at the old Marine Hospital and I came and visited okay good and uh, this was my first school and in those days it was right after World War II and I went to school over at Eastern Washington Cheney and the recruiter came over and with just a handshake we agreed that uh, i would come to seattle and i knew seattle was big enough there had to be a place for me and i was assigned to beacon hill and mostly i taught half a day of uh, crafts and wood shop and half a day of science and uh, maybe one thing i commented on was uh, right across the hall from me was a, a little short teacher named Goldie Drake, who I thought was old then, and maybe she was 50 or 60, but I was 28, I guess. And I said, uh, I'd had a bad day. I said, these kids should be put on islands. And she said, well, what do you think junior high is? <laughs> But uh, by and large, uh, this was a, a fine school. I learned to uh, like zucchini here. Um, every time there was a birthday, somebody brought a birthday cake and we had a party. Um, I had, uh, well, I can tell you one day, one of the kids gave me a uh, nice piece of taffy and I bit into the piece of taffy, and this is a f fake tooth. And when I, I felt a draft, so when I reached out like this, well, here was the taffy and here was my bridge work right on the taffy. And uh, I called the principal and he came in and took the class and I walked across the street and the uh, dentist over there glued back as best he could and uh, so I came back and taught. And uh, to make the story a little longer, that same tooth later on, I was going to summer school down at San Jose State College. It came out and uh, Dennis was too busy, so he put stick him on it and told me, he says, you know how it goes, put it up there which I did, and after it hardened, and we looked at things, I had a, a buck tooth for about four or five days. And, but I had a five-year plan. Uh, since I lived in the North End, still live in the North End, the uh, same place I lived when I was here. Uh-huh, but we're getting too old. It's an acre and a third, and uh, someday we'll have to move. Uh, but I had a five-year plan, so I had five years here, five years at Meany, then at Marshall Junior High, uh, at the end of five years, I was department head for mathematics, so I stayed there for three five-year plans. 
taught at Jane Addams Junior High for six years. That made 31. And I had my time in the war and the time I had worked for Longview Fiber Mill, and I retired. And lo and behold, I've lasted for 15 more years, I guess. Thanks. Now, well, up to last year, I, I tutored some mathematics, which was easy because you have only one child at a time, uh, twice a week for half an hour or so. But I finally gave that up, and so I, I do gardening and uh, a few other hobbies. We do some traveling. Um, this, just this, that, and the other thing. It's mostly honeydew projects. I guess I should end it that way. <laughs> Thank you. brother and he was in your class and at his funeral evidently a lot of you decided to get together and it was a wonderful opportunity for me to come back to Beacon Hill because I spent nine wonderful years here and it's still in my dreams all the time and I actually want to come back and see if it's the same as what I'm dreaming about. Um, delighted to be here. It was it's just very nostalgic. Um, I'm full of emotion.
Jose Marti was a uh, a hundred years ago, he was a Cuban uh, poet and educator. Um, some of his poems you might see around here. There's four classrooms, and they're based on different themes. Right behind you here is, it's called El Agua, the water. That's for the real little infants. And then to my right is El Sol, the sun. That's for the little older ones. And then Arco Iris, the rainbow here. It's another classroom, and over here is El Viento, the wind. That's our Head Start class, our oldest kids. These are divided by ages, and uh, uh, we primarily serve, well, we serve all, all children, you know, whether they're low income or not. We have a sliding scale, I believe. And, uh, if you know some children that want to, uh, our, our classes are all races, and they usually learn a smattering of other languages, you know, but the, the classes are, of course, done in English. Um, you'll see them one day. Yeah, just see I remember on the floor the day. Yeah, those were the gifts and stuff. That's the windows for me. Right, like, we got that. I'm 
she she knew the importance of dignity in people's lives. So she struggled with that. So this is Isabel. She can tell you about some of the different uh, programs that are run out of this department. Hi, my name is Isabel. I'm the office manager for the social services department. And, like I said, this uh, uh, department was uh, named in honor of Francis Martinez, who was one of the first ones that started the, the social services in, in this building, okay, in this community. Um, right now, presently, what we have is we have um, case management, um, very limited, where we help homeless people. We try to find a shelter. We try to place them in homes. We also have a food bank that we operate every Wednesday for people in the community. We have mass feeding every day, Monday through Friday, from 12 to 1. We also have an ESL program, English as a Second Language. Uh, it's a federal funded program that we have um, with the goal of teaching basic English to um, immigrants so that they can get a job. We also have a senior program uh, where that has two components. One is there's a van, a metro van, that picks them up and brings them over here. They have lunch and they have sort of a social hour where they talk to other people and they're given uh, a nurse comes and visits them and they get different lectures, uh, ESL classes too. And the other one is where we deliver um, hot meals to the homebound seniors, seniors that cannot get out and move <coughs> around, we deliver hot meals. Every day? Every day. And, this is Friday. and then on Friday they're delivered a frozen package for the weekend.
between people on Beacon Hill today and uh, our workers and all of you from four to five. And there's uh, refreshments and uh, we have put up some of the um, art, uh, art exhibits that, uh, that we maintain and a photo exhibit we're very proud of that was just done this spring by our Hope View program. And the young people here are members of that program. And, you know, Clayton and Earl are part of the uh, yeah. photo exhibit. So the, the, reason, <laughs> that, the, the reason we set it up is um, that it has uh, the photos. It's not the complete exhibit, but it has photos of the school from the turn of the century and, and from the 30s and, and 40s. So uh, if, if, if it's all right with all of you, we just uh, mingle uh, and enjoy refreshments, and then probably about uh, 4, 25, 15 minutes from now, uh, we've got chairs up here. We thought we'd just have a program where some of us could greet you and some of you could tell us what went on in this building. <laughs>
so that we, because of the, they said they'd show it at the 5 o'clock news, and some of you wanted to see that. And what we're going to do is uh, probably put the big screen TV up right in the hallway, Juan, behind us, and uh, without the volume on, and, and if they can tell us from the So what we thought, we're not going to take much time. Also, also one of the other competing um, interests is the Hope for Youth program of El Centro de La NASA has a, a special part. There's five components in our Hope for Youth program, but one that I'm very uh, proud of is a poetry leadership workshop. These young people uh, received honors from the United States Senate, from President George Bush, from the United States Congress, from the President of Nicaragua. They've been in Nicaragua and Mexico. Uh, they're invited by Mayor Dinkins to New York and to uh, Washington, D.C. by Mayor Sharon Pratt Kelly. And, of course, they've been in a lot of other places where they carry out hope and leadership and responsibility. We're honored because to, today and tomorrow, there's a crew here, producers, camera crew from the public broadcast system that's producing a documentary on the resurrection or resurgence of poetry in the United States. The documentary is going to air next year on the PBS channels, and it's called The United States of Poetry. They've selected about 75 poets across the United States, and our Hope for Youth Poetry Leadership Project was one of the poets selected to be on that national movie. And at 5 o'clock, we're going to go into a workshop with a great poet and producer of that whole project from New York City, our brother Bob Holman, who is with us right now. Bob, you want to stand up? Say hello, everybody. Uh, also, the director of those days, Mark Pallington, stand up. Mark, who's oh, already standing up? So we're proud of, of our young people. Um, without any further ado, our, our idea was to have Roberto um, uh, reach you, say a few words on behalf of our organization. We're going to turn it over to Clayton and all of you to inform us whatever it is that you'd like to inform us of about what happened here in the 40s or on the hill. Uh, we've already heard some wonderful stories about a, a prisoner of war camp. None of us knew about that. And uh, now I'm not sure it's true or if it was true. Uh, Roberto came to Seattle from uh, a wonderful place in New Mexico about the time, not long, after you all graduated from the eighth grade. And he went to Cleveland High School, lived down in uh, South Park and uh, Georgetown area, and has been in this part of Seattle ever since. He went to the University of Washington and became involved in the national level local uh, politics and, and the civil rights movement. That is the, the effort to advocate for and to work for the rights of all citizens in the United States to be the men and women that we are meant to be. I'd like to give you our executive director, Roberto Mast. Pues, buenas tardes, queridísimas hermanas y hermanos en particular, los que están celebrando la graduación del uh, grado octavo uh, hace 46 años. Uh, good, good afternoon, my dearest sisters and brothers, and particularly those of you who are celebrating the reunion uh, of 1948. Let me take a minute and thank uh, Roy Wilson and his staff of the outreach. Of let me very quickly tell you that I, I identify so closely with every one of you that stood up because last August, I got wind that um, 
there was a reunion of everyone who uh, was had graduated or was supposed to graduate <laughs> from the high school <laughs> from the high school uh, in, a, in a little town in northern New Mexico by the name of Las Vegas. I went. I went to that reunion. It was the first time in 39 years that I had seen some people. And one of the first things that happened was some of us sat down and we were sitting there and uh, somebody said, Joey, how are you? And Bobby, oh my goodness, that, that was me. And, uh, <laughs> and Ralphie, is that you, Ralphie? Uh, and Dickie, Dickie, how are you? And then somebody says, what is this? Dickie, Bobby, Ralphie, Joey business. And we said, who, who are you? And he says, I'm Cooper. No wonder, who gives a question to do with Cooper? <laughs> Hell, it's <laughs> from that wonderful, thrilling moment when you came to this beautiful, beautiful school. You, 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 gotta, uh, you gotta understand that, that this hill is, is one of the most special places on the planet. This is proof of it. Where else in this city, country, I don't know, are people hanging together from the elementary school that they graduated from and coming together. That, that is a unique and wonderful expression. <laughs> and uh, some of you have, have thanked us for um, inviting you. Uh, on the contrary, we're, we're so honored. This is a, a deeply moving moment for us. We uh, had no idea, could not have even conceived that when we walked in in 1972, that we would have such a, such a wonderful and memorable moment in our 22 year history. I landed by way of the migrant stream and the Yakima Valley in on Beacon Hill on the very first day I arrived in Seattle because I was a baseball fan and loved baseball and I used to hear on the radio on Seattle radio. I walked from Georgetown across Beacon Hill, saw the school, played a little basketball that morning before the game started and sneaked into the six Seattle Stadium. <laughs> I don't know, 50, 54, 64, 74, 18 years later, we walk in and we said, don't, you're not going to tear it down. You're not going to leave it abandoned. This is, it's got, it's got a future. It can, it can be something. People can make something with just a little bit of, of help and a little bit of initiative. And 22 years later, you have come home and you have made us worthy of being here with you today. Thank you. I am Armando Martinez, and this is my poem. My elders, sit, my boy, sit down, my man. Bees purple as blood swarm thirsty. Teeth more yellow than sun. His tie chokes red. Glass is thick and erupting like two volcanoes. Glasses erupt like volcanoes. Her garden grows, no matter where I sit. Hands move blossoms, send water, whirl like a blizzard of love. She reads and cooks like a cook. I watch her cover by cover, cover herself and him for the winter. <clears throat> Sun glows through my eyes. Awake, I hear the shower. This woman, pure corn, each kernel God's gift of love. In her hand, she puts heaven into earth. Glasses erupt like volcanoes. 
Good evening. I stand proud to call Earth Grandmother. Thank you. I'm Auntie Alice, and I'd like to thank you all for being here. I've talked to a couple of you guys, Mr. Ang, Mr. Earl, and you there. <laughs> I've given them a tour, and I thought it was only going to take 10 minutes to give them a tour. But it took us like an hour to do it, because in every single room, we had to stop. And they had all their memories and all, all the stuff that happened. It was so much fun. I enjoyed it so much. Thank you. 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 Th
benefit from it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, I think I was the uh, only Asian person in this uh, school uh, in third grade, <coughs> and um, I think it was the third Asian family on Beacon Hill. Um. And um, the teacher, knowing that I was Asian, wanted me to read a story about a Chinese um, family and didn't get up in front of the class and tell about the story of uh, the family. And well, I didn't like reading. And I was scared to get standing up in front of everybody. I didn't like to tell. But anyway, I went home and I told my mother, I said, I know, I don't want to read this story about this Asian family in Jeff. And being a wise mother, she says, uh, you know, the Chinese invented the gunpowder, they invented the, uh, the magnet, they invented the uh, compass, thank you. Spaghetti, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, I don't care, I still don't want to be Chinese. Why want to be Chinese? And she says, well, you know, you can yourself. Always respect the teachers, always respect the policemen, and never bring shame or dishonor upon your family. That is very true. We should respect not only the teachers and the policemen, but everybody. Give respect to everybody, no matter what they are, or who they are. And I think we have this, this problem in our world. And to this day, I have no regrets of being an Asian. <laughs> Anybody else? You can tell a story. <laughs> I, I can tell. But anyway, anybody else in our class want to say something? Um, I know myself, I, I'm really um, happy time that I feel like crying of joy that we have this opportunity to, to be here. Uh, we've survived all these years of renewed friendship, uh, renewed uh, the past, yeah. and I, I really, really appreciate this. You know, this is a great moment in our lives. Yeah, I always got in trouble for singing too much in class. So, is there anybody else? <laughs> 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 Did, I couldn't James Chen wants to Beacon Hill from Bailey Gatson when I was sixth grade. Like Clayton, in those years you want to assimilate. To speak a foreign language was not cool as it is now. I went to Chinese school and I never learned. I think I went to third grade three different times. I know I did. <laughs> Kindergarten was a snap. I was a second hour student. From there it went downhill fast. But I remember that when we came from uh, from Beacon Hill, about uh, 5 to 7 or 7.30, we had to go to Chinese school five days a week. We had to go from 9 to 12. And in my mind, I was trying to assimilate. Why am I Chinese? Everybody else, Clay and I were the only Asian families here. We wanted to be and assimilate into the Caucasian life. And the only thing I remember from Chinese school, I've forgotten everything else almost, is except this. Those that are FOBs fresh off the boat, which I was, uh, learned how to swear in English first before they learned anything else. <laughs> so we taught our English-speaking students how to swear Chinese first. <laughs> so this, of course, did not endear us to the teachers. But well, we had a hell of a time in the schoolyard. <laughs> 
in El Centro was here 20 years ago. As a matter of fact, just two years before they had become El Centro de la Raza. And so uh, for some reason, I didn't connect with El Centro at that time. But 20 years later, or 19 years later, today I'm talking about, uh, by way of a, um, it was a sequence of unusual, very beautiful, tough circumstances. Uh, my wife and I just married. We also celebrated our first anniversary two months ago. This is my wife and I. And she's going to have a birthday Monday. Uh -huh. so, I, I have a birthday first, of course. And then... <laughs> I believe in taking care of myself. <laughs> anyway, um, it took, it took uh, this encounter, me having met my wife, about three years ago in the border town of uh, Hidalgo, Texas, near McAllen, Texas. And uh, ever since then, we, uh, we didn't know we were going to marry each other. We didn't know it was going to be everlasting, like it is turning out to be. But we knew there was something there. Even before I saw her, when I heard her voice, and if you could hear her talking in Spanish, anywhere down the hallway, uh, you can see Elisa's over there because her voice is outstanding. <laughs> but when I heard her voice, I knew there was something for me. Then when I saw her face, I knew it had to be mine. And it is now. Uh, but what, I'm, what I want to say is this. It took this encounter for us to a year after we married, because Elisa is a unique woman, uh, she helped raise and educate all of her brothers and sisters, and uh, she took care of her parents. And, well, I'm going to say four decades, you know, <laughs> went by. <laughs> four decades went by, and uh, finally she decided to marry, and of all people, me. Now, she had... She had so many admirers, male admirers, doctors, lawyers, uh, political people, businessmen, all kinds of professionals. Of course, she, she's beautiful, she's intelligent, she's very lively. And she chose me to marry. But it took her almost two years to decide. And then it took her half a year for, for me to get to hold her hand. And then it took her another half a year for me to plan how to ask her parents you know, for her hand, according to the Mexican tradition. Now, we did everything according to the tradition, because she was going to be the first one and the only in the family who would come out marrying the right way, the correct way, the old-fashioned way. And it happened. And we're so proud of her. But then she remained with her parents for a whole year before she says, okay, let's go, let's go make our life. Let's go live together. And uh, since I had been in Seattle 20 years before, I told her, look, there's a beautiful city in the Pacific Coast in Seattle. And by some, I don't know, she had also been in uh, Toppenish, or Toppenish, okay, several years back. And she says, well, once upon a time I was in Toppenish. Why don't we go to Washington and see what there is for us? We piled everything in my 1985 Cavalier, it's a small four-door car. We packed all that we could that we thought would be essential for survival. We left everything and everybody behind, and we had it going. We ended up in Pasco. Then from there, we came to Wapato, and then to Coppenish, and then to Yakima, and then to Seattle. And lo and behold, we found, or we met, or were found by this wonderful man. You guys have already. Uh, heard, listened to, and uh, his 
his charisma, his love, his attention, his genuine concern for his fellow man was so overwhelming. Uh, <laughs> it's only it's it still it still overpowers me to say this or to think of this. And we were homeless, we were sleeping in the car, we were in the street. But we heard about El Centro de la Raza, we came, and this man took us in just literally like this, both of us, and hasn't let us go since. And I thank God for this, and I hope he never lets us go. Because we want to literally just live the rest of our lives here. Uh, we want to help, we want to do what we can, what we should, maybe what we should have done for many years. But whatever it's going to take, uh, I'm here to say, and I think my wife will uh, back me up, but uh, finally we have ended up where we both know uh, we belong. I'd like to tell you that we're up here now. What a wonderful place to be growing up. It was safe. It was like a town all by itself. We knew everybody, and everybody knew us. It was during the war, which is interesting now that we have two games in our minds at this time. But we were just kids. We didn't really, we weren't really involved, but we knew what was going on. We were doing our share by giving money at the theater when they would stop the show and ask you to pass the hat, so to speak. And we went to the Beacon Theater Is our lives. And our parents, we go out and we play at the play field till 6, 7, 8 o'clock. They didn't worry about us. We never, we weren't afraid, at least I wasn't, and I don't think we have any of us had any encounter with anybody who was a frightening thing. And it's sad that that's still not here for all of us because this is a
family and a lot of friends that I was going to come to a great school reunion. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And they were in high school graduates and all that. But a great school, they thought it was great. And uh, it's been really something for me, I'll tell you. To see all you old. <laughs> I've carried a moment to, to with me a scar right here from playing soccer. soccer. <laughs> Dick Tatino. Does everybody oh, 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 his big logging boots? <laughs> 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 I've still got that scar. <laughs> and it's been great. And you have put on a wonderful show. Yeah, a wonderful yeah, program. Yeah. I have enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before I got out of the service, I think I must have been in my early 20s or something like that, and I dropped in to see to say hello to her. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was, uh, I didn't write it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, I was just telling Sammy that I really felt negative for 22 years about the takeover of Beacon yeah. School. I felt that when it happened, I didn't like it. And, uh, Thank you for sharing that. Today, yeah. you're welcome to have it. <laughs> My family came to um, Seattle because of the war. I've, I've heard other people up here say the war. To us, the war <laughs> was World War II. I realize that's ancient history to a lot of people. I know it was just one of many wars way back, but to us it was the big war. And many of our uncles and uh, fathers and so forth were in the war. And I was living in Seattle when I got the news that my uncle had been killed by a Japanese suicide bomber on his ship. He was a radio operator and he was in the tower. Um, I can remember the trip back to my grandmother's house. I can remember all the years of the war sitting around the radio listening to every detail uh, of which ships were sunk and all of the things because my mother came from a family of 12 children. And she had five brothers in the war. Oh. And so before the war was over, my grandmother had gold stars in her window. And my grandmother, who always seemed to me, you know, the epitome of the, the woman who stayed at home and raised the children <laughs> and did nothing else, became quite well known, as a matter of fact, in the in Aberdeen and Hopewim area as the president of the, <laughs> of the gold star mothers. And, um, uh, amazed me because I never could picture my grandmother standing up in front of anybody. Well, we did have wonderful growing up years. When Clayton talks about finding out he was actually Chinese, mm -hmm. if he told that to any of us, we would have said, oh, you are? <laughs> <laughs> because to us, uh, everybody was just kids. Some were brunettes, some were blondes, some were redheads. And uh, <laughs> we took that for granted. And, and I can remember being in all the different kinds of ethnic homes here. The most remarkable ones to me were the Greek homes because uh, they were very close with their children. They watched their children very carefully, and they were very careful who they associated with. And the rest of us sort of ran around like wild Indians. <laughs> uh, as I was telling somebody today, our parents never it never occurred to them to get babysitters. Uh, we were a part of that generation where the women first went into the workforce during World War II. Our mothers went into the workforce. Our aunts and so forth uh, became workers, and so we were left home alone. Nobody ever thought that we needed somebody to watch us. Uh, I was nine when my mother went to work, and she said, be good, be home. 
And I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I was. Although we played until late at night, and I, be, I remember being afraid to go into my apartment at night. I lived in Liberty Courts apartments. Uh, down 14th and... Um, Land, yeah, 14th and Land. 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 When we got back together, every one of us said, we had the most wonderful time growing up. And we did. I cannot ever remember, even though uh, we were fighting war, we saw Japanese families leave, uh, go to internment camps during the war. We saw some of them come back after the war. Uh, my uncles were involved in fighting, uh, mostly the Japanese. One of them was in the European uh, front. Uh, I can. I never remember my parents saying anything about any ethnic group at all, negative or positive or anything. It was not remarkable, you know, when we grew up. And so we grew up with this wonderful ability to see people for who they were and not what they were as far as their race went and so on. And that was very fortunate for us. I, um, I really feel that we had the the most innocent era to grow up in. It was wonderful. We just had a great time and we loved this school. And I too, when I first heard that the school had been taken over, I thought, what? What are they doing with our school? And uh, yeah, and I am so delighted by what I've seen today. I am so delighted that it is such a cheerful, positive uh, place to be. And I am delighted at the talent you have here and all of the ways that you are encouraging it. It's just real special to me because we have good memories about this place and they're even better now. I have a big, you know, rosy glow about the place. But Billy Jean's uh, uh, comment about the age of innocence did remind me of one thing that happened to me that all it kept me from being the President of the United States because it was one of my <laughs> most humbling moments. <laughs> I'm not at all sure that any of you will remember this. <laughs> Obviously, this is the one thing I really remember. I was appointed uh, chairman of a, of a party. <laughs> I had uh, a mind for money, I had a mind for organization, I had a mind for throwing parties, and, and I had a mind for having fun, and all those things. But there was one little fragment in my upbringing that my mother failed to, to, to teach me, and that caused me a great deal of uh, humility. I put on this fantastic party, and the teachers and and these are things that are just beautiful, food, and everything is perfect, but you forgot the napkins. And so I said, I still have some money, I'll be right back. So I left, went over to that supermarket right around the corner, came back with four cartons of napkins like this, and put them on the table. And the teacher was so kind, I'll never forget it. She came over and she tore open the one little corner and she took me into the room. She was very kind. She says, Honey, I think you got the wrong kind of nap. just I'm almost like what am I going to say well, I, I think back to the times when I can remember Skip getting off for lunch and you remember you both your parents worked yeah. we used to go over there and oh, God, eggs and all I 
think back to how people up on the hill here, we families, people stuck together, like for instance, Skip's dad. Uh, I, I want to put a little stroke out for him because he was our scoutmaster. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a lot of us that, yeah. that got some of our real fundamentals, the real things that we got started with. There you go. <laughs> and his dad, and I can remember to his dad's effort, there was a lot like my parents, my dad, and, and, and Jack, who's deceased now, his his parents, we took the hikes and things, and the, and the parents chipped in, and they were there with us, and they were part of it. And I think that's something that the community is, is missing now, and we need that. We need more of that. And what I see going on here today, and, and here at this establishment, is, is I think a step in the right direction, back to what it used to be back in the age of innocence, maybe, is what you call it. What, what's my opinion? Oh, he is more than welcome to my And I, I really think that, uh, uh, to me anyway, it's, it's, just, it's just a real good, warm feeling in the, in the guts to, to be able to get back with all of my classmates and have a chance to get together with all of you people and to really see this going on. And we really do appreciate the turnout that you've, you've shown here for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for the fifth grade and have some not all fond memories of Miss R.K. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. Does anybody remember the um, the uh, trip we made down to the meat plant and watched the hot dogs be made? Yeah, I can remember <laughs> carrying these things out the door and. Uh, the dogs must have known that they were shuffling people through. They're giving them samples because the dogs were waiting outside, and we disposed of them that way. And I don't think I ate hot dogs for a long time. In fact, you know, now you're not supposed to eat beef hot dogs. So I was trying to eat chicken or turkey or whatever they call. Them. Yesterday, or the day before, yeah, it was yesterday. Um, I succumbed and I ate a hot dog with my grandson for lunch. And then last night on the TV, but I don't know, this is where my ruts are, and uh, I'm just really overwhelmed at the hospitality these people have shown us, and uh, what a wonderful thing they've done with the building. It's, it's so positive, and it's so colorful, and... Uh, I don't know. I just want to thank you again for your hospitality. We just had a wonderful time here today. No, I'm not. <laughs> and break into the shop all the time. <laughs> uh, no nothing. <laughs> I think it's vast improvement. <laughs> what you described the building mm. was when you came here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, whether you knew it or not, uh, you must have been the first class that I, the first year I taught was 47, 48. Uh, so, uh, I must have been experimenting. And my memory mostly is, well, I grew up in a place called Kelso, which uh, I couldn't remember ha having known very many Italians. And uh, let's see, what else? Because to me, so marvelous. Uh, in the classroom when somebody had a birthday, a cake arrived and we had a party. <laughs> somebody discovered when it was my birthday. And uh, I think for years and years and years and years I had a, a shirt that I wore that was given to me. And uh, I'd never experienced this before. And I learned about pasta and beans and uh, I told someone else about the first parent-teacher conference where I went to the home to visit and uh, the mother said would you have a little glass of wine and 
in politeness, I said yes, and it was a water glass. <laughs>
mm. and then got rid of it on the east side. It'd be easier to drive across that bridge here. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. I uh, I really enjoyed it. It's nice. A lot better than it was when I was here. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's cheery. <laughs> I could probably stay awake in this building. <laughs> I believe what an idiot my father was. I could hardly stand to be around the old man. But when I was 21, I couldn't believe how much he had learned in seven years. <laughs> I have a second book. This got written because I was at a very bad place down place in my life and I couldn't find anything to grab a hold of so I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I had taken a lot of pictures so I went through all my old work and I said I know there's got to be a pony amongst all this horse shit somewhere <laughs> <laughs> this is the living cycle over and over the lesson comes clear and strong from the world around us life is touched to matter and what grows is a gift of the universe. Mm -hmm. Each part has a rhythm of its own. Each piece will never happen again in quite the same way. All right. For me, I'll never forget this day. This is this day is better than a reunion in high school. That's right. Yes. 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 Uh, where it just seems like we're a tight knit family. Um, no matter what our nationalities are, whatever race, whatever, you know, it's just a, a great day, and uh, I thank you very much for your assistance, Steve and Roberto, for helping us make this a tremendous day in our lives. Really, we will never forget this day. I will never forget it. And uh, again, I thank you very much for your cooperation and assistance and giving the television uh, exposure. And, uh, Again, this is in, in, because of a classmate that passed away uh, that had uh, this, okay. as a catalyst to start this uh, reunion. Because uh, uh, Jay and I, we went to the funeral and we saw Lorraine and Pat and said, hey, we need to get together. And this, one, one person passing away came to this great day. We did not know that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. That made it even more precious. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. But, uh, I, I, I read it a little memorial to him. And, uh, and yeah, I was part of the name of the Owen Bull, Owen Arthur Bull, and uh, Jack Sturman. Uh, yes. We miss him. We know he's been bored. And I believe some of Owen's family is here. Yes, uh -huh. right. Yes. Right. 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 And his right. sister and brother-in-law was right. here uh -huh. about it from one of you, and right. we're honored as a follow-up to the funeral day. I got a chance to speak to them briefly, and they, uh, they said it was just such an incredible gift that you all gave them as a family in honor of him and his life to come together like this, and they were deeply, deeply moved. He's a wonderful fellow. Yeah. Any